Hey guys, how's it going? Well, today I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about my topic at the same time I'm making some dinner. So, two rust potatoes. Topic today is going to be um, the question of being single over the age of 40. Should you... I wish I had a potato peeler because then I could just scrape these things off. I wonder why I don't have one in here. I don't think I do. I'm going to have to buy a potato peeler. Oh well. A friend of mine and I were talking about this the other day and uh, basically the question becomes if you're single and over 40, there's different, um, it's a different situation than if you're a younger man and over 40 or a younger woman. But I, I kind of, this is more geared towards men since I'm a man, and you'll see as I'm talking about why it's more orientated towards men. Um, so I've been divorced now for about 15 months and I'm very happy that I am it uh, was an excellent decision um, but you know I'm happy being single but at the same time if there was a person who really kind of struck my fancy would I be um, would I pursue that relationship and some ways it's a it's an attractive option, in other ways it's not. So one of the factors when you're dealing with uh, choosing to be single or not is um, when someone's over forty, like say it's a woman, she is uh, she likely has kids. I mean, most people over forty have had children or a significant relationship in their life. So what happens with that? Well, what happens is they have something you might call baggage. And um, if they have children, I mean, I love kids. Kids are, uh, I mean, I have two kids of my own. I absolutely love kids. I think they're fantastic. But when it's somebody else's kid, I have no problem being with a woman who has kids, but I can see how it gets complicated. For example, um, you know, so you're in a relationship with a woman. Now, she may or the kid's father may or may may or may not be in their life, and if you are serious about this relationship, how does that affect? what your relationship is with her kids. For example, um, say it gets really serious, you end up moving in together and all that jazz, and then three years later, five years later, whatever, you end up not really working out together. Um, now you're not only going to break up with her, but you're going to break up with her kids. And it's one thing for adults to have to deal with this difficulty of breaking up and stuff, but it's another thing altogether with the kids. I mean, if I'm going to be around these kids all the time, chances are we're going to grow a bond and we're going to like, like each other. Um, and so what are you supposed to do then? Just leave and say, bye bye kids. I'll never see you again. Um, it's not like you have any rights to visitation or anything. I mean, if it was a girlfriend and you had a big falling out and, and you didn't want to really see her anymore, that's fine. She's an adult. And that happens. But when there's kids involved, then that means that that's really going to affect them. And how, you know, that could have a huge impact on their life. Because if there's no father figure already and you kind of take that role... That's heavy, man. Like now you're now you're gonna stop being that person in their life, and that will have huge impact on them. Um, and it's it's a real question. It's a real question. Ideally, you know, 
I mean, you can't say to the kid, by the way, your mom and I could break up, so don't get too attached. Let's not form a bond or anything because, you know, who knows what will happen in the future. But at the same time, of course, you can't really do that. And the other thing is, if you do um, try to keep a distance, what happens if you're with a woman for 10 or 15 or 20 years? That just seems inauthentic to me and uh, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work and I don't really have a solution for it. It's, it's messy, I guess is the way to put it. It's just a messy situation. So you kind of, if it works out and everything's great, hunky-dory, fantastic. But on the chance that it doesn't work out, man, that's ugly. And is it worth putting those kids through that? If I was a woman, I would really think carefully about that. Is it really worth putting your kids through that? So what's the alternative? Do you just like um, uh, always keep the potential boyfriend at arm's length from your kids? And say, oh, that's Uncle John. <laughs> uh, or this is my new friend or whatever. And uh, don't like... Um, you know he's a nice guy and everything but you know we don't really need to spend any time with him or whatever as uh, with the kids and the mother um, that really makes things complicated so that's one part um, of uh, the whole situation being over 40 uh, and thinking about getting a, a female friend or mate or whatever you want to call it okay I got my potatoes peeled and now I'm going to cut them up into little pieces. Um, now the next part of being, thinking about getting involved in a relationship after the age of 40 is people over the 40, by that time, you should know who you are. You should understand what's what you're happy with in life, um, what's acceptable to you, what your standards are kind of a thing. Um, and that makes things complicated because, um, well, in a way, in dealing with relationships, because now when you're, I think what uh, basically I'm trying to say is as you get older, you get less flexible. Um, you're not going to be as flexible about things as you would if you're a younger person, because younger people are just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Whereas younger people are, are still, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about in terms of relationships. Um, so when you get with a person who's older and you're older, people are going to be less flexible and it's going to be harder to get along. I mean, I, I'm just surmising here based on what I think, because um, I know that I am less flexible now than I ever been. Um, I, I know what I want and I know what I like, and I'm not really willing to... I mean, I'm willing to compromise, but it's just harder because why accept less than what is ideal? I mean, if the people aren't compatible, then it's going to make things really difficult very quickly because both people are going to say, you know, I don't really want to do that. What if one person's a real homebody and likes to stay home and watch Netflix all day? And the other person is someone who likes to go socialize all the time and, you know, is very active physically or whatever. They go mountain climbing, they do yoga, they go bike ride. These are big differences. Even, even if you have very good chemistry together, these things will create challenges. And when you're older, the challenges are going to be harder to look past. So, um, yeah. People are, when they're older, they're less flexible, and that makes things more difficult for relationships. Okay, another aspect is money. Most people, by the time they're in their 40s, uh, their career is kind of set. Their financial path is in full motion. So often you will be judged by how much you make and, a, and a, a woman might say um well you're what do you mean you're the manager of mcdonald's and you're 45 
um, I would hope that you would have tried to achieve more than that in your life. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, it depends what's important to people. Some people will say, eh, it doesn't really matter as long as he's a nice person and we get along and we have lots in common, then that's cool. Other people will say, nope, I have my standards and I want this person to have all these things that I want to have. Um, including financial stability and fi not just financial stability but uh, what's the word I'm looking for financial depth you know they want they want assets you know big fancy car uh, big house all that stuff the more you have of that that is highly attractive to certain members of the female gender um, other ones don't care and I'm much more attracted to ones that don't care and don't value people or your ability to have worth based on your financial standing. Um, I would hope that uh, that would be the case, but unfortunately, some people just aren't like that. They base their they they base their self-esteem on what they've achieved and how they. Uh, how they add up into the world, how they compare to the Joneses. They have all the stuff, they got all the stuff. Well, where's your stuff? Oh, I don't have any stuff. Why not? Well, I took a different road. A road less traveled, perhaps. Or I didn't have those opportunities. So that thing makes things a lot more difficult in terms of finding someone, because I think as people get older, that matters a lot more to them. Especially when you're talking about you know, 20 years, it's going to be time to retire. And then if you're in love with somebody who's a, uh, doesn't have the same financial wherewithal as you, it makes things difficult. Another thing to think about is when people are older, they tend to know what their set routine is. They know what their life goals are. Um, they know it makes them happy. And they will, they're not so, um, of course, I'm, you know, I'm making massive generalizations here, right? Not everybody is the way I'm saying, but I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just making huge generalizations. But most people, they know that life is not a fairy tale. This isn't Cinderella. This isn't, uh, you know, a glass slipper put on a beautiful foot. This is reality, and reality is life is tough. And so they are much less likely to um, have their head in the clouds and be, and even though they may fall in love with somebody, they may say, well, there's all these other factors can, to consider. Anyway, those are just a couple of the challenges I think about in terms of relationships when you're in your mid 40s um, people don't have their heads in the clouds life is not a fairy tale and they have expectations and standards that they're gonna want to have met and if you can't meet them then they ain't gonna work um, they're much more likely to think about things logically and rationally and say well does the person have financial stability um, does the person have kids? Do I? Does that matter to me? How how does that affect uh, the future of the relationship? What happens if we break up? What's going to happen to my relationship with those kids? So there's a lot of factors to consider. So there we go, guys. That's dinner. Broccoli, potato, peanuts with some curry powder on top. Of course, I'm going to mix that in a bit. So, am I going to remain single? Probably. Um, I don't see that changing any time in the near future. If there is an amazing woman who uh, pursued me, uh, then I suppose I would consider it. Uh, you know, you can never say never, say never as they say. But um, I'm not really looking and I'm not uh, there's a lot of things that have to be considered such as what I what I mentioned in the video um, especially if she has kids um, I don't want to rush into anything and uh, mess up 
some child's life. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to end the discussion there. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a great night.